So I wanted to talk to you about the last time Liverpool won the Champions League. You know, uh, a season on the brink is being reprinted, uh, re-released, yeah. re therefore. Um, which meant that it was out of print, which I didn't know. If I had known, if I had known, it would have been reprinted months ago. <laughs> but I found out that uh, some, some Liverpool fans were telling me they wanted the book and they couldn't find it all in second hand. Amazon and stuff like that, so I made a call and yes, it's been reprinted. Tell me some of your favourite stories from that book. Cause it was your, am I right in saying it was your first book you'd written? It was the first book, yeah. And I thought that was it, you know. I always knew I had a book in me, I didn't know I had six. But uh, it, was, it was special for many reasons. It was special because I was there the first day that the new coaching staff came to Melwood. I took them out. This actually is not in a season on the brink. But uh, um, Rafa didn't want to come out that day, but the rest of them, Ocho Torena, Paco, and Paco Herrera and Paco Ayestaran, said to me, um, do you know any restaurants in Liverpool? This is 2004, okay? okay. No, no great restaurants, but no money either. So I don't know any restaurants. But the answer was, yes, of course I know lots of restaurants. Uh, uh, but what restaurants do I know? The ones that we go to after drinking, the Chinese restaurants that you go to at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So I didn't know if they would be open like at 1.30 that was or 2.30 <laughs> in the afternoon, but I said, I know the places. So let's get a taxi and I'll take you there. So we went to Chinatown. They eat, they ate it. But la later they told me that they will never ever ask you for <laughs> restaurant recommendations anymore. Well, I can, I can <laughs> change that view of them I've now. Improved. If they're watching it, this has been fantastic. I've improved, I've improved. But yeah, it was like, you took us, I was like, I, I, I was a student. I, I, I didn't know anything. <laughs> Restaurants. What, do, what the hell do I know? You know. McDonald's, please. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> so, but anyway, we, we got on really well, and it was a kind of dream team, wasn't it? Four guys just uh, away from the families, and I, I, I was very close to them, and I got to see how they worked, and from the inside, which which allowed me to learn a lot, and then eventually, when the publisher said uh, at uh, seven o'clock in the morning on the twenty fifth of May, uh, two thousand and five. It was like, we're doing the book. And it was like, uh, okay. We I was just getting ready to go to the pub then. At seven in the morning? At seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I was excited. I was ready to go to the pub for a day. Were you here? Drinking. Were you in Liverpool? In Liverpool, yeah. Well, I, mean, I, I, I wish I had been. I was in Istanbul and, and you know, we ended up, uh, I ended up mixing with uh, Xavi Alonso's family and it was so weird because you're, you're static from such a game and whatever's happened and, and of course we finished like two o'clock in the morning over there because two hours two hours more uh, and then the next thing's like right what what, what do we do are oh, we going to the hotel let's go to the hotel and uh, when Chavi saw, saw me he's like come on sit down and he was in a big circle and it was all his family and they were all like this it was good wasn't it yeah it was good there was some more water yeah some more water <laughs> thinking where's the party the party was in Chinatown in Liverpool <laughs> <you know? laughs> maybe oh no it, where, where Jamie Carragher was partying and uh, Jamie was, uh, was at the door because uh, there would be a lot of people queuing outside the hotel, knocking the door. And uh, Jamie would be, uh, one of the guys at the door would go to Jamie and says, a cousin of yours outside. So the 50th cousin of the night will just be welcomed in. Yes, he's my cousin. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> Yet another Carragher. Come in. And I uh, remember uh, Stevie G carrying the cup around the hotel and you know, sleeping with it, as, as we know. And then I was given two months to write the book. So it was like, have I, because I, they, everybody goes on holidays. And I couldn't be in Liverpool when they came back. So I, I had to be in Istanbul an extra day because the flight back was too expensive. So it was like, all right, let's start. Phone call to Jamie Carragher, to Stevie G, to Xavi Alonso, to Rafa Benita. I said, I have to meet you. We have to, you know, Paco Herrera and all that. And they all said, yes, Catuso. Wow. Uh, the referee was Spanish, Mejuto González, yes, yes, everybody was yes, yes, yes. So in two months I managed to put the story together, what, or what, what happened there. And the stories are the halftime half -time stories. Uh, I, I, uh, I got in my head that when I go on Thursday to, uh, to meet uh, Jorgen Klopp, I'll tell him what happened at halftime in Istanbul. And I'd like to know what he thinks of it and what he would have done. Because in those seven minutes, you know, you had to change the mentality of the players, you had to change the tactics, you had to bring, bring Haman in. So of course Traore goes, goes and he starts showering uh, and then Finan, uh, the official says Finan is injured and Finan is shouting, I'm not injured, but he put something in the middle, I'm not injured. 
and Rafa goes, well, then if he's injured, we already got a substitution. So Traore, put your kid back in. By the way, this is how we're going to play. Smith has never been a, w a wing back in his life. You're going to be a wing back. Uh, and he's like, boss, you've got 10 players on the board. Oh, yeah, sorry. But then, then I'll change that. And then the striker's going to come here. Boss, you've got 12 players on the board now. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> but then that's seven minutes. This is seven minutes. And then he's like, right, uh, didn't we beat Olympiacos? Did we score three second half goals? Yes, we did. Well, we can do this again. <laughs> I don't know who got convinced by that theory, but uh, <laughs> anyway, it was put out there by somebody. And then next, they, uh, they're coming out, and, um, and then the, there was this myth that uh, AC Milan players were celebrating. Not true. Uh, but what happened was Gattuso comes into the pitch, and he hears, you never walk alone, because we were singing, you never walk alone. And, uh, and, and he goes to his fans, come on, we're winning 3 0, come on. Uh, Jamie Carragher, I don't know if I said it in the book, but it was Cara. He says, look at him, he's celebrating. They're already celebrating. All right. They're already celebrating. So, it, again, you know. If Half Liverpool truths, though. I mean, if Carragher believed it and he was telling the players or whether he didn't believe it, but it geared those players up. It geared the players up. Uh, wow. And then, of course, the goals come in. in uh, Fry and egg. Just, just put like that. Just like that. Some salt. Put it in. Some egg, you know, some oil, to tune, to tune, to tune. Put the egg on the dish. The three goals were scored in the time that it takes you to fry an egg. <laughs> so, what? Yes. So you decide in the middle of the game to go and fry an egg, or boil an egg either. And the whole history had happened. So, Gattuso was saying it just felt like, you know, they were knocked on the first one. And then they were knocked on the second one and they just couldn't get up anymore. Even one at the penalty. Uh, so penalty gets given. Gattuso is thinking, no way we're going to win this. And they were still ahead. Yeah, yeah. And actually the penalty gets missed. Yeah. And Zabi, so, Zabi knocks it in after, after, after rebound, doesn't he? So for those that want to, uh, you know, go through the myths and hear reality, still is fantastic reality, by the way, so, you know, don't ignore it. But uh, that, all that is in the book. So. And now, of course, you've, you've branched out from Sky and from television and, and journalism into YouTube as well. Uh, so anybody who wants to catch up with uh, Gillan Balagay on YouTube, it's youtube.com forward slash Gillan Balagay YouTube. Nice and catchy for us all. <laughs> Dead easy to remember. Easy. Um, I've, been, I've been watching it, actually. Um, you mentioned some of the stuff that you, in, our, in our other interview on Liverpool before uh, about the chaos theory that you've got about yeah. Liverpool and stuff. I'm loving the stuff you're doing now on Twitter live from press boxes and stuff. Is that just much easier than writing it all down? I don't know. Uh, it, it is what it has to happen. Uh, There's the a end. moment that you're capturing when you're doing that, which I feel when, when something's written, it comes out maybe half an hour later or something, but... When you're still stood there talking in the middle of a stadium, you're in the middle of it, and there's some, I don't know, there's some passion for me there that you can't get into the written words. Yeah, you have to, I mean, writing is, is hard, and, uh, and the, you know, to actually read something in the morning, you should realise the, the short time that you've got to finish it off, and, and you start, there's so many cases of you start writing, and, and, you know, Manchester United scores two goals in the last two minutes, and it's like, uh, and wins the Champions League that way. Nothing of what you've written makes sense because a lot of us, um, and I'm generalising here, but get affected by the result. The result as a story is very difficult to say, but they did not deserve it. Yeah, but they won. All that analysis uh, is difficult to just do very, very quickly. Um, but yeah, I, I have a sense that, to me, what I've always done, and I think you're the same, I communicate in different formats. It could be Twitter Live, it could be uh, or Periscope, it could be... YouTube, books, it's about communicating, telling stories. Uh, and now the way to get the audience and to tell the stories is via YouTube. I feel that uh, there's such a potential there that you identified a decade ago, but, uh, but that I'm coming to terms with now. And, uh, and, you know, to be able to talk this way and not be constrained by, you know, the five minutes that I get on a Monday uh, morning at, at Sky Sports News is great. It's great because I, I, I feel that, you know, I can tell a story. I've got stories to tell. I, I just, you know, need the platform to do, to do so.